So last week, we started this series that we're simply calling Darkness versus Light. And uh, the, the whole idea of this, this entire series is that there's this battle going on over our souls. There's this spiritual battle that's going on over our souls. And so last week, we focused on this idea that uh, Satan came uh, from heaven to the earth. He was kicked out of heaven, and he basically covered the world in darkness. And because of that, we tend to have some dark times in our life. And, and so uh, I talked about last week some of the dark times that I have faced in my life and, and just encouraged you guys that as you face dark times or if you are currently facing dark times, uh, you are not without hope. And, and today we're going to talk about the hope that comes, but I encouraged you guys last week to do three things when dark times come on your life. And, and here are those three things. First is this, be honest with God. It's so vital. Be honest with God. God can handle our anger. God can handle our emotions. God can handle the things that we are thinking and feeling, even if it's doubts and questions and why me. He wants our honesty. He wants our hearts. And he wants to just wrap us up in a hug and help us walk through the darkness. Second thing is this, talk to your darkness about, talk about your darkness to a trusted adult. Talk about your darkness to a trusted at all. Find someone that you trust um, that, that has had more life experience than you. Uh, maybe that's a parent. Maybe that's uh, one of the leaders here at Worship Uncoiled. Uh, maybe that's just someone that you're close to. But find someone that you can trust, that you can talk to, that can come alongside you and help walk through this. And the third thing is this. Don't be afraid to ask for professional help. There is absolutely nothing wrong with asking for professional help. And so when we face dark times, those are, those are some practical ways that we can walk through those uh, and, and God can help us walk, walk through those. But today, we are going to talk about how Jesus and the light that he brings, brings us hope. Jesus and the light that he brings, brings us hope. Because here's what I'm convinced of. Light changes everything. So there's, there's this guy, his name is Diet Wigman. Anybody ever heard of him? No? No? Okay. Diet Wigman is this artist who became crazy famous in the 1980s, which I realize is long before any of you guys were ever born. He became famous in the 1980s because he started working with this new type of sculpting. Here's what he did. He took trash and he made a sculpture out of it, and then he would place light on the trash, and the shadow would create this incredible work of art. And so, I mean, you can see it here. This is, this is just, like, this is leftover bottles. You can see a, a Coke bottle right down here at the bottom. These are, these are old um, metal things and chairs, uh, and, and he, he puts these together, and and when the light is not shining on those, they're just a sculpture that looks like trash. But the light changes everything. I've got another picture of one here. Uh, there's one he's most famous for, this one right here. Um, and, then, and then he did David. Uh, and and if, you, if you search the internet, you can find all kinds of, of his sculptures that he has done throughout the years. Uh, they're called light sculptures because, because the truth of the matter is that light changes everything. Light shining through the darkness changes everything. In the book of John, John starts writing this book and he has parallels to what we talked about Last week, check this out, John chapter 1, starting in verse 1, it says this, in the beginning, hold on, let me stop there, do you guys remember last week, we talked about Genesis, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, John is starting all the way back to creation, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, he was in the beginning with God, all things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made in him was life, and the life was the light of men. This light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. 
And then it starts talking about this man that came as a witness. There was a man sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. And then, verse 14, the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of as the Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. I love the way that, that this ties in, that Jesus was God. Jesus was God. He was with God. He was in the beginning. Everything was created through him. Everything was, are you guys paying attention back there, back row? Paying attention. Everything was created through him. Everything was created by him. And, and Jesus was there. And, and I... I I think so often, like, we read through Scripture, and, and we just read through it, and it's just like this uh, solitary, like, one-story thing. But, but I, I want to point something out, that this, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. Now, I'm going to stop right there between verses 4 and 5, because there's a shift. There's a shift that happens. In the beginning, Jesus was there. Everything was created Everything was good. Everything was perfect. Everything was awesome. The light of Jesus gave life to mankind. Mankind was living and breathing and walking in the garden, and everything was good. Let's pause right there for a moment, because we know what happened in that moment. Jesus was there. And Satan came, and darkness, like we talked about last week, just enveloped the earth. It just came, and it just overtook things. And you guys have experienced the darkness in your life because of it. You've experienced death and disease and divorce. You've experienced hurt and pain. You've experienced uh, people turning their backs on you. You've experienced the darkness of this world. And I love what happens here. It says that the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. See, light changes everything. When light shines in the darkness, darkness can't overcome it. There is nothing about darkness that can overcome light. Now, I'm not going to lie. Maybe some of you are like me, and maybe some of you are like, dude, I grew out of that like 10 years ago. And yes, I'm like 12, and I grew out of it when I was two. But darkness makes me nervous. I'm a little bit afraid of the dark, a little bit freaked out. I'm just going to own it right now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it up front. I'm a little bit nervous. Uh, I, there are times where I go to let the chickens out uh, or put the chickens up, either one. And it's, it's a little dark while I'm doing my chicken chores. And, like, I hear a noise in the back row of the fence. And I get a little nervous. Um, and, and so, uh, but when I was a kid, and, and I've, I've been nervous in darkness since I was a kid. But when I was a kid, I lived at a house with this awesome tree right outside my window. It was a weeping willow. And it was massive. It was a huge tree, and it was awesome. And my dad hung a rope up in the top of the tree so we could climb and get to the lower branches, and we could climb up in this tree and hang out in it. And I spent hours sitting in that tree over the course of the summers. But at night, especially around this time of year when the wind would blow, everything changed. In the darkness of my room as a kid, the wind would blow the weeping willow branches against my window, and it would make these weird, spooky sounds that I was not a huge fan of. And then the cars would drive down the street, and like they would, their, their headlights wouldn't shine right in my window, but it would cast enough of a shadow that I could see the cars driving down the, sh the street. And I was just absolutely positive. I had, I had a theme running through as a kid, if you've heard my past sermons, I was absolutely positive there was someone hiding in that tree that was going to get in my window and get me. And of course, I know the tree is a great place to hide because 
I hide in it all the time. I go up and I climb in the tree and I hide in it all the time. And so there's this darkness and there's these sounds and there's these shadows and there's, there's all this stuff going on. But everything changed. Everything changed when my parents would tuck me in and they would turn on my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles nightlight. There was something about the light that changed everything. It made the noises not quite as scary. It made the shadows not quite as bright. And the light changed everything. It made it infinitely better. Now, guys, I'm, I'm still nervous of the dark. Um, as I went through middle school and high school, I was the one that was known to like be in our kitchen and sprint through our house to my bedroom and hop in bed as quickly as I could. To this day, I kid you not, there are times that I get in my car and, you know, I'm not thinking a whole lot about it and I'm backing out and it's dark and all of a sudden I'm like, um, oh my goodness, it's pretty dark. Is there someone in the back seat? Because I, I did not look in the back seat to see if there was someone there. Like, like just weird stuff. I'm just freaked out of the dark. Um, and, and the darkness has always made me nervous. But here's, here's what I love. Light, light changes everything. Light shines through the darkness. It breaks through the darkness. Darkness cannot stand it when the light comes in. And, and John says this light, referring to Jesus, shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Here's, here's the thing about light. Is that in order for light to shine in the darkness, it has to go into the darkness. Uh, do me a favor real quick. Uh, Gunner, are you on lights? All right, turn down the lights for me. All of them. Boom, right there. Okay, all right. Now, here's the deal. In this darkness, it's dark. I have a light in my hand. But unless that light enters the darkness, darkness prevails. Darkness is going to be there until the light chooses or the person holding the light chooses to enter into the darkness and turn on their light. And suddenly, the darkness has no power. There is nothing here near my light. And if all of you started turning on your lights, there is nothing, there is no darkness in this room that could overpower any amount of light that we would shine. But here's the deal. The light has to make a decision to enter to the darkness to make a change. Go ahead and turn the lights back on for me. Here, here's what's incredible about this. What's incredible about this is that Jesus was in heaven. He was the light. He knew everything was absolutely perfect where he was. He knew what coming to this earth would mean for him. But he also knew what it would mean for us. He also knew that if he came to this earth, there would be light that shined in the darkness. The darkness was not going to overcome it. Any darkness in our lives is not going to overcome the light. And so what he did is he made a decision to come to this earth and engage with humans. He made a decision to step out of heaven and to enter the darkness and shine his light. And that's when John says, the word became flesh. The light shines in the darkness. The word became flesh. Jesus came to earth. And that gives us hope. And, and here's the thing. I love, I love that John uses this analogy of light versus darkness. Because light is powerful. Light changes everything. But it doesn't necessarily change our circumstances. When I was a kid, and my little Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle light would turn on at night before my parents tucked me in and shut my door, 
that light did not change any of my circumstances. There was still a tree outside my window, and the wind still blew. And there were still cars that drove down the street, and there were still shadows that were cast on the wall. But the light gave me a new perspective. Look back at these pictures. I, I didn't put this in order, so I apologize if it's Quill up on the computer. Uh, can you go back to the pictures of Diet Wigman? There we go. Look at these pictures. Here, here's the thing, is that just because the light shines on these sculptures does not change the fact that they are a pile of trash. It doesn't change the circumstance of the sculpture that this is just a bunch of broken bottles and this is just a bunch of random metal pieces that are put together. But the light gives us a new perspective and it's like, holy cow, that is incredible. And when we face darkness in our own lives, we have this light that has come into our lives, the light of Jesus that is absolutely incredible and amazing and it may not completely change our circumstances. Our family members still may get sick. Our friends still may stab us in the back. We still may get depressed. But in the midst of the darkness, the light can give us hope. In the midst of the hardship, the light can give us a new perspective. I told you guys last week about um, some of the dark times that, that I have faced uh, in my own life. And you guys, without the light and the hope of Jesus, those times would have completely overtaken my life. And, and here's the cool thing is that in those times, there, there are people sitting in this room that have walked through some of those moments with me. And they're encouraging words and notes and cards and their prayers have expressed the light of Jesus into my own life. And here's the cool thing about the light of Jesus is that it gives us hope. It may not change our circumstances but it can give us hope. And the cool thing is that God wants to use us as the light of Jesus in the life and the lives of the people around us. And I'll offer them hope in the midst of their difficulties and offer them hope in the midst of their darkness and in the midst of whatever circumstances they may be facing. Because the truth is, while light may not change our circumstances, it certainly does change everything. It certainly does give us hope and give us a purpose and give us something to live for and move forward on. And so the question is, what do we do with this? What do we do with this information? That's awesome, CJ. Jesus came to the world. He offers us light. Okay, what? And so, real quickly, um, two quick things that we can do with this information. The, the first one is this. Turn to Jesus in dark times. We talked about this last week. Do those three things. Be honest with God. Find a trusted adult. Don't be afraid to get help. Please, please, please know that, that God is there for you. God has put people in your life specifically to help you, and God has gifted professionals with the ability to, to help you in your darkest times. Turn to Jesus through any of those avenues. Second thing is this. You guys, be the light of Jesus. Be the light. You guys walk around people every day that are just overcome with darkness. You walk around people every day that put on a smile and say they're doing great and they're trying to fake their way through the day, but you know, you know 
they're struggling. And it may be that God has placed you in their life at this moment to be the light. It may be that God has placed you in their life at this moment to be the person that expresses the light of Jesus to them, that says, hey, I'm going to shine light. I'm going to show you love. And I'm going to walk with you through this. And we're going to do it together. And it's going to be hard, but I'm here. And so I want, I want to encourage you, if, if you're facing darkness, go talk to someone. Be honest with God. But, but if you're like many in this room, and life is pretty good, then I encourage you to find someone that you know that is facing a time of darkness. And just shine the light. And that's, that gets a little bit more messy. Because remember, to shine a light, you have to enter into darkness. You may have to step into their lives and be the person that walks along with them through the darkness. But God can use you in an absolutely incredible way to do this. And so my practical challenge for you guys this week is simply this. This week, intentionally be the light to someone. Send that text, make that phone call. When you ask someone how they're doing, they're like, I'm fine. Just fine? Everything okay? This week, we have an opportunity to step into darkness and shine the light of Jesus. You guys, this, this is what the church was made for. The early church, we see them shining the light. We see them helping people in practical and tangible and incredible ways. We see them loving people around them. They were shining light in darkness, and they were stepping in to dark areas, and they were showing the love of Christ. And if we in this room, just us in this room, would take that seriously, everything would change. It would be night and day difference in our friendship circles and in our schools and in our spheres of influence. So let's start this week just once intentionally be the light to someone that may be struggling in darkness. Let me pray for us. God, thank you so much for tonight.